All right, welcome back to the iOS development channel. My name is Max and this is Max Codes. In this video, we're gonna continue building out our linked list class. And uh, what we're gonna be doing is we're actually gonna be implementing the ability to remove a node at a given index. Okay, now if you're new to the channel and you haven't yet watched these videos, go ahead and check out the playlist in the comments. I commented as the very top comment, you should be able to get to this playlist where you can watch all the videos on how to build out a linked list in Swift. Okay, now if you're interested in building out an array as well, I'm actually creating a course on Udemy where you can build out this linked list and an array and that should be good. So if you wanna check that out, check out the link in the description. Now, let's go ahead and get started with this method that we're gonna write by going into our class here. And at the bottom of our class, what I wanna do is actually just introduce a new method. And this method is gonna be called public var, sorry, public function remove. And then we're gonna pass in a node as a parameter, and then we're gonna return the type, okay? So when the user removes a node, we wanna return that type and just kinda of print it down here but you might see that we're passing in a node and it's like, how do we get that node and pass it in, right? All we can do is really pass in values. So how do we really know which one to remove? And the way we can actually do this is by actually removing at a specific index and then we'll call this method. So what we're gonna do is we could either similarly do something like this where we take in the value in the index or we can write this method and write another method. So what we're gonna do is this way so that you can see two approaches to this, okay? So the first approach would be to take in a value and an index, but again, maybe there's multiple values in the array. So what we're gonna do is this other way of doing it by introducing another method, and we'll call this public func remove at, and we'll just take in an index. And notice I put an underscore. That's so that we don't really have to uh, pass in a label, okay? We can just say something like list.remove at and then just pass in a number. We don't really need to give it a label. Now, the reason I'm doing that is just to give you uh, an additional tip if you've never seen this before, okay? So I'm trying to introduce a few different ways of coding in here just to kind of show you some of the features Swift has to offer. Okay, so what we're gonna do in this is we're gonna get our node. How do we get the node from that index? Well, we've already written a function to do this and it's called noted index, right? Let's scroll up. You'll see we have this function called noted index. So what we're gonna do is call this to get our node. Okay, so we're gonna call noted index to retrieve the node we're trying to remove. And remember the way we call this is by passing in an index. So what we'll do is we'll say let node to remove is equal to node add index and we'll pass in the index and then we will return to the user or to the programmer using our linked list a call to remove and we'll pass in that node okay so this returns the type as well which means ultimately when we're returning this function call we're returning a type which will return that same type to the user of this class method okay so we want to pass in node to remove Sorry about that. But now we're ready to actually write the logic of this function. So let's kind of think about these cases here, okay? Well, we want to first get the previous and the next node so that we can kind of relink everything together when we remove a node, okay? Let me explain this in a diagram. Okay, say we're removing this new node. I used this exact diagram uh, either in the last video. Yeah, it was the last video. Uh, episode seven, where I used this diagram to show you how to insert a new node. And we kind of just walked through the code a bit to get to this point. Now what we're doing is removing it, right? So what might we have to do to remove this? Well, we can't just delete it because then this pointer is still pointing, trying to point to that node. And this one's trying to point to that node. We kind of need to remove it. And we we first need to do that by removing its own pointers, so it's its own next node and previous node, but by also resetting the next node on the head and the previous node on this one, right? So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to get the previous node of the node we're trying to remove, which is this head in this case, and the next node of the node we're trying to remove, which is gonna be this node, right? And then what we need to do 
is we need to kind of just move some pointers around and then set this one's pointers to nil. Okay, so we'll refer back to this diagram and kind of mess around with it. But for now, let's just get access to the previous node and the next node and then write out a little bit of code so that we can get on our way. Okay, so what we're going to do is say let prev is equal to node.previous and then we'll say let next is equal to node.next. Again, this is taking in the node we're trying to remove, so the node to remove, and then we're getting its previous node and its next node, okay? So we're taking this node that we're trying to remove, and I'll rename this to node to remove, and then what we're doing is we are getting its previous and its next. So its previous is the head right here, and that could be any node. It doesn't have to be the head. It just so happens to be that we're trying to remove the one next to the head, right? So you can just think of that as another node. It does. It's not particularly the head. Okay, so what we're doing is we're getting the previous node and its next node. Okay, so that's those two. And then what we're going to do is we're going to see if there is a previous value. Okay, because maybe we're trying to remove node at index zero. And in that case, that's the head and it doesn't really have a previous value. So previous could potentially be nil and so could the tail, right? Because if we're trying to remove the very last one, its next could potentially be nil. So what we're going to do is handle the case if previous is either nil or not nil. So we can do this by using an if let. We can say if let prev is equal to prev else. Okay. So basically what this is doing is saying if previous has a value, so if node to removes previous has a value, then we'll run that code, else we'll run that code. So if we were trying to remove index zero, it would run this else statement, okay? If we were trying to remove index one, it would run this one right here, okay? So what do we wanna do if we're trying to remove this one? Well, we wanna set the previous next equal to the next. We want to reassign this from this to this. So how do we do that? Well, we simply say prev.next is equal to next. Perfect. So we've now just done that. We've now just reassigned this node's next to that node. So it's no longer referencing the one we're trying to remove. Now, what do we need to do? Well, let's skip over this else statement for now and let's finish what we need to do here. We need to set the next's previous node to this previous, right? So how do we do that? Well, pretty simply, all we have to do is say next dot previous is equal to prev. Now, what did I do with that question mark? Well, we don't really know if next has a value either because node dot next is also an optional value like you see up here in the node class, right? So we'll just go ahead and say, okay, well, if next has a previous value, then we'll set it to previous. Okay, if it doesn't have a value, then it's basically just not gonna run that line of code, which is basically gonna be the case of this right here, okay? Let's see, let's kind of think about that. So next dot previous. Okay, so if next has a value, if we were trying to remove the tail, let's see, if we were trying to remove, yeah, the tail, then next wouldn't have a value, right? Because it's nil, which means this line just simply wouldn't run, which is just fine because we don't really need to set its previous because it doesn't exist, right? So that's why we can just use an optional question mark right there, okay? Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to set the node.previous equal to nil and the node.next equal to nil. Okay, so we're gonna say node.previous is equal to nil and node.next is equal to nil. And the reason we're doing this is because these next and pre this next and previous value, they're still pointing to right here and right here, okay? So it's still in memory and it still kind of exists, right? We don't want this node to exist even if these are pointing to each other because now we've created this linked list that has a random node that's like below these two, right? You can think of these as closer together too, right? As close together as all these are. And then just this random node right there, right? So the way we can get rid of those and delete this completely is by setting node.previous equal to nil and node.next equal to nil, ultimately deleting these which then deletes this node. Now, if we were working in C++, what this would do is it would cause a memory leak because this node would still exist. So the ideal situation, the ideal thing to do here, even though Swift is gonna handle this, 
what we need to do is say node is equal to nil. Okay, because we don't want this node to exist. We just want it to go away completely. Okay, and that these three lines of code basically just does that. Okay, you'll see it's no longer here because it removes that pointer, which is the previous or the next. Let's start with the previous because the code does. We're removing the previous, nil, moving the next, nil, and then we're removing the entire node, nil. Bam, it's gone. And we can make these shorter because they don't need to be long. Okay, and we've now successfully removed a node. Okay, so that's the code there. But what about the case that previous doesn't have a value, okay? What if the case is we're trying to remove the head? Well, we just want to say head is equal to next, okay? Now, why do we want to do this? Well, if we're trying to remove the head, then all we really need to do is say, okay, well, head is equal to the next node after the node we're trying to remove it, which is this one. So that's now the head, okay? And then we'll run these lines of code still. So next.previous, which is still head technically, we're going to remove that. Sorry, we're gonna set it to previous, which is nil. So we're gonna, it's gonna be nil. And then what we'll do is we'll say nodes previous is nil. So we're gonna get remove this. It's already marked nil, but you get the point. We're removing that. And then we will say node.next is equal to nil, which is gonna remove this pointer. And then we're gonna say node is equal to nil, which is gonna remove the node, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. I'm just gonna command Z this so I can use it for my own future purposes. But yeah, hopefully that makes sense. And let's just kind of look at this code a little bit longer and just make sure that we have written it correctly, okay? Cause you'll, like I know we've written it correctly and we should test it right now, but I just wanna see if there's a better way of writing it, right? So let's say list.remove and I'll say, not remove, but list.remove at and we'll say two. So we're just gonna, well, we'll say one just to remove uh, ASDF, okay? Well, we're inserting this at two, which means, yeah, it's still gonna be ASDF at one, but if we were to remove two, it would remove insert this. If we were to remove three, it would remove another one because another one's now shifted to three after we inserted it. Okay, so let's remove one, just to keep things less confusing. If we run this code, it's going to remove, oh shoot. Okay, yeah, so let's just delete this line. Essentially, you'd have to do that in C++. You'd set it to null, but in Swift, memory's handled for us, so we don't really need to worry about that. But yeah, let's go ahead and just play this, and it will remove that one, and you'll see it print out, and then we'll print out the entire list, and you'll see that it's no longer there. Okay, it looks like we might have another error somewhere in here. expected return type T. Let's go ahead and return the node.value. Okay, perfect. Let's go ahead and hit play here. It might require us to put a question mark. Okay, we're good. Okay, so you'll see it remove ASDF. It's right here and it removes it. Okay, so it works just fine. Let's go ahead and remove two and three. And you'll see that this crashes because we're not, because once we've removed two, we've removed another one, which means, well, let's try this. Let's say one and two, and it's still gonna crash because we're trying to remove one, but then we remove two, but there's no longer that many elements in the list, so it crashes. But if we were to say remove two and then one, it would work just fine, okay, because there's still that many elements in the array. There's still two elements in the array, so it's not out of range. Hopefully that makes sense. It's kind of something that you just kind of intuitively have to understand after messing around with it, but uh, that should be good. Okay, now let's scroll up here and just kind of mess around with the code because I think there may be a different way we can write this, okay? But as of right now, you've learned how to remove the nodes and you're completely good to uh, move on to the next video or watch a different video on the channel. But I just want to go over this so let's see what we have. We're saying it left if left if let prev is equal to prev prev dot next else head is equal to next. Okay, well why couldn't we just say something like prev dot next? Let's see what that does. And the reason we don't really want to do this is because now we don't really have a way to handle the 
head case, okay? So now that I'm thinking about it, all right, so we should be good there, but what if we're trying to remove the this one, the tail? I would imagine that that would be a little bit different. Oh, okay, so basically in a case, a normal case, we could just do prev question mark dot next and not do all this iflet, but since we do have the possibility of removing the head, we kind of need to write this line of code, okay? Write this iflet. But if we were to remove the tail, then what would happen? Well, we would take that nodes next, prev would be prev. So prevs.next would be equal to next, which would be nil. Okay, so we'd move this to right here. And then this would, and then we'd take the next previous, which is gonna be nil still. And we'd say is equal to previous, which would be this. So that doesn't do anything because nil, it's already nil. And then we just take the tails previous and set it to nil. And then we would take the nodes next and set it to nil. And then we would just return the value and Swift would handle this memory and we're good to go. Imagine that the nil is still there. Okay, so I was just a little bit confused myself, but again, diagrams freaking help, right? I was walking through it and I was able to understand what's going on here because of this diagram, okay? So I really, really, really encourage you use a program like this or just anything to diagram and kind of walk yourself through these algorithms because they can be confusing without it because it's really hard to just store all this in your head and think of it all at one time. Uh, so yeah, I highly recommend using diagrams and messing around with them to understand what's going on. Okay, so that is it for this video. Let me go ahead and check really quick what is on the agenda for the next video. It looks like that is it for the series. However, maybe I'll update it in the future. But what I do know is that the course on Udemy will contain a few extra videos for a few extra methods in the linked list. And I'll let you guys know about that later on. Don't really wanna plug it too much right now. But yeah, glad to have you here. Glad you learned how to build a linked list with me. If there's anything else you want added, let me know and I can work with you to get that added. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you watch future series. Let me know if these algorithm and data structure videos are helpful. And yeah, I'll catch you in the very next video I upload tomorrow morning.